My dear brothers and sisters, welcome to our today's teaching. My name is Stephen Mbugua Doidi from the Archdiocese of Mombasa, Kenya. Today, our teaching is titled The Power of Relationship. The Power of Relationship. In the last so many weeks, 10 weeks or even more, we have looked at this amazing love of God from creation to redemption to the great and constant love and generosity of God. And the, the big question is why all this trouble with God? Why always loving us so constantly even when sometimes you don't love him back? You know, love is based on relationship. And a good relationship makes the love grow stronger. And when the love is growing stronger in turn, you can experience the power in that relationship. Power becomes evident. In many parts of the Bible, and I'm going to read Jude chapter 5, verse 17 and 18, a poem that is reflected in many other parts of the Bible. The Bible says, as long as the Israelites did not sin in the sight of their God, they prospered. For their God, who hates wickedness, was with them. But when they abandoned the way he had prescribed for them, they were utterly destroyed by frequent wars and finally taken captives into foreign lands. The temple of their God was raised to the ground and their cities were occupied by their enemies. As long as they obeyed God, as long as they had a good relationship with their God, they prospered. The power of relationship. Good relationship versus poor relationship. Powerful versus weak. A couple of weeks back, I talked about attracting the favors of God, grace, the undeserved favor of God. And I gave an example of a parent who has five children, for example. Four of them are very naughty and disobedient, but one of them is very obedient and humble. And a parent comes back in the evening, the father or the mother, and he finds his five children, four disobedient, naughty, they don't listen, they argue, they complain, but one of them very humble and obedient. And when the mother or the father goes to the fridge, he discovers that there's only one sausage. Among the five children, which one does he call aside and tell him or her, go to the fridge, there's a sausage. The one with whom they have a good relationship, Favors will just flow. I get the example of Idi Amin versus Mandela. If they are both to rise from the dead and they come to you and tell you that I need a favor from you, who would you easily accept to cooperate and work with? Obviously, the one with whom you feel there's a good relationship or there is a good reputation, but not the one with a bad reputation. There is power in good relationships. When you have a good relationship with the Lord, you become victorious because God is with you. When you have a poor relationship, you become a loser. First Samuel chapter 4, verse 1 to 11. Today I really want to walk with this, with this book of uh, Samuel. First Samuel and Second Samuel. From chapter 4, 1 Samuel chapter 4, verse 1 to 11 says, At that time, the Philistines gathered to go to war against the Israel. So the Israelites set out to fight the, the Palestines. The Israelites set up their camp at Ebenezer. And the Philistines at Afek. The Philistines attacked, and after fierce fighting, they defeated the Israelites and killed about 4,000 men on the battlefield. The nation of God, 
defeated at war, 4,000 men killed. Being a Christian on the side of God, but still being beaten by the enemy, the arch enemy, the devil. When the, when the survivors came back to come, the leaders of Israel said, why did the Lord let the Philistines defeat us today? They were not used to losing. In as long as we were in good books with God, they always won. And now today they are, they are surprised. Why are we all of a sudden starting to lose to these guys? We've always beaten them, crushed them. But today we are losing. Why? Let us go and bring the Lord's covenant box from Shiloh. So that he will go with us and save us from our enemies. Remember the Ark of the Covenant was the presence of God in the Old Testament. God chose to be coming to his people in the Ark. Carrying the Ten Commandments. And wherever God was with them, they won battle. So today they have lost their sin. Let us go back and pick God where they left him. My dear brother and sister, where have you left your God? They are saying, let us go and pick him, be with him, and you are going to win the battle. And they did that. So they sent messengers to Shiloh and fetched the covenant box of the Lord Almighty, who is, a, who is, who is enthroned about the winged creatures. And Eli's two sons, Hopni and Phineas, came along with the covenant box. When the covenant box arrived, the Israelites gave such a loud shout of joy that the earth shook. They were happy that now God is with us. We will definitely de we win this battle, or so they thought. You know, many people think that just because you are a Christian, just because you are baptized, just because maybe you receive the Eucharist as a Catholic, just because you say, I am saved, that you are an obvious victor, not necessarily. Not necessarily. They were with God now. Verse 6 says, The Philistine heard the shouting and said, Listen to all that shouting in the Hebrew scrap. What does it mean? When they found out that the lost covenant box had arrived in the Hebrews camp, they were afraid and said, A God has come into their camp. We are lost. Nothing like this has ever happened to us before. Who can save us from, the, from those powerful gods? They are the gods who slaughter the Egyptians in the desert. They are recalling the mighty acts of the living God. The ever victorious God. A God who has never lost and will never lose. And they are saying, now we are finished. But they told themselves, verse 9, be brave, Philistines. Fight like men. Or we will become slaves to the Hebrews. Just as they were our slaves. So fight like men. The Philistines fought hard and defeated the Israelites. Who went running to their homes. There, there was a great slaughter. 30,000 Israelite soldiers were killed. 30,000 now with the presence of God. 4,000 when they didn't have the presence of God. But now they are with God and they are being killed. Many times more. The question is, why? Verse 11 says, God's covenant box was captured and Eli's sons, Hopni and Phineas, were both killed. They were priests, but very unfaithful. The shepherd eating the sheep. Poor relationship with the master, with the Lord. And they were killed and the Ark of the Covenant was captured. Amazingly, when the Philistines took the Ark of the Covenant, they went and placed the presence of the living God in the temple of their God, their God. 1 Samuel chapter 5, verse 1 to 4 says, After the Philistines captured the covenant box, they carried from Ebenezer, to their city of Ashdod, took it into the temple of their god Dagon, and set it up beside his statue. Early next morning, the people of Ashdod saw their statue of Dagon had fallen face downwards 
on the ground in front of the Lord's covenant box. So they lifted it up and put it back to its place. The presence of God is so powerful that this ca cadet God Dagon actually bows down before the living God. This is the power of the presence of God. Yet the Israelites lost with that power. But now the, the, the enemies, the, 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 the pagans, the people who don't know the living God, they are placing him, his presence, in their temple and their God is bowing down to show that there is no other God but the living God. They put their God back to his place. They went away early the following morning, verse 4 says. They saw that the statue had fallen down in front of the covenant box. This time its head and both its arms were broken off and were lying in the doorway. Only the body was left. Their God, the God was now beheaded. He had no head and the hands were chopped off. And he was bowing before the living God, showing you the power of the mighty God of Israel. Yet the Israelites were losing when they were with him. Yet we Christians are losing many a times. Yet we are with God. Why is the question? Why should we lose even when we are receiving Jesus in the Eucharist? Why should we lose even when we are saying we are saved? There must be something wrong, just like for the Jews at that point in time. Verse 8 to 10, 1 Samuel chapter 5, verse 8 to 10. The Philistines were worried, so they sent messengers and called together all five of the Philistine kings and asked them, What shall we do with the covenant box of the God of Israel? Take it over to Gath, they answered. And so they took it to God, another Philistine city. But after it arrived there, the Lord punished that city too and caused a great panic. He punished them with tumors which developed in the people of that city, young and old alike. The God of Israel is like no other God. He's no joke to just take him anywhere. The Holy Ghost presence with the unbelievers, they suffer diseases. They raise their hands. Verse 10, they say, so they send the covenant box to Ekron, another town, another Philistine city. But when it arrived there, the people cried out, saying, they have brought the covenant box of the God of Israel here in order to kill us. Panic, fear. They were running away from God's presence. Just like Adam and Eve were, were running away. Just like we can be in the church but away from the presence of God. They were running away because of their sinfulness. They didn't know the living God and the ways of God. And they said, no, take the covenant back to the Jews. Let it go back to the Hebrews. And it was taken back. 1 Samuel chapter 7 verse 2 to 4. The covenant box of the Lord stayed in Kriath Jerim for a long time, now in the territory of the people of God. Some 20 years. During this time, all the Israelites cried to the Lord for help. Now, they are with the presence of God. The covenant box is there, but they're actually crying. For 20 years, they lived with the Lord, but it is as though that the Lord. It is as though as the Lord was not there. The way we live sometimes as Christians, even receiving Jesus in the Eucharist, even claiming that we are saved, but sometimes when the people say, look at that, they see like, it's like it doesn't exist. Look at the corona menace. The way Christians were freaky like everybody else in the world. It is as though Jesus is back in the tomb. This is how these guys were, were living for 20 years with the covenant box, but they didn't even recognize that they had the presence of God with them. I always imagine that maybe they had kept the box in some room. And the man who used to sweep or watch that room would sweep and push the, the covenant box a little bit for 20 years. And they are suffering and they have God with them. The Christian of today, we have God with us, but sometimes we live in the same way. Why? 
Corruption is no more. Fornication is no more. Adultery is no more. Witchcraft is no more. Hatred is no more. Abortion is no more. We can never experience the power of God in this kind of state. We can't. We need to mend our ways. Start building a relationship. And when the relationship with the Lord is powerful, we will experience the power of relationship. We have become too familiar with the Lord, too familiar with the Eucharist you just received, too familiar with the words I'm saved. Even when in corruption, even when in fornication, claiming that it's only by grace so I can continue sinning. Those are not the ways of God. Verse 3 says, Samuel said to the people of Israel, the prophet of God, now telling them what to do, if you are going to turn to the Lord with all your hearts, you must get rid of all the foreign gods and the images of the goddess Astarte. Dedicate yourself completely to the Lord and worship only him and he will rescue you from the power of the Philistines. And this is what you are being told today. Do you want to experience the power of relationship? Get rid of all the other gods. Be it the money god, be it the property god, corruption is there, be it the sex god, fornication and adultery, be it the witchcraft god, whatever god you have, be it football is more important than God, whatever god you have, get rid of all the foreign gods. These are the things that are messing our relationship with the Lord. And, and someone is telling them, love the Lord only. My dear brother and sister, how does a spouse feel when the partner is moving with another person? And how is that relationship? Can it be powerful? No, it is wicked. And this is the same thing with our God. When you start moving the side of the devil, living with the devil, sleeping with the devil, the relationship with the Lord cannot be powerful. A relationship is based on mutual trust. And faithfulness that's how we build a relationship for it to be powerful and the way you feel bad when your partner your spouse dogs you moves in our parcel that's how God feels when you forsake him we need to move back to the winning ways we need to move back to the ways of the Lord verse 4 says so the Israelites got rid, got rid of their idols of Baal and Astarte and worship only the Lord. Relationship, true love, both ways, nurture, and they went back to their winning ways. Because of the power of relationship, they won every battle. King David came now into the mix. After Saul had messed around, he was taken away. David came. And David decided to go and pick the Ark of the Covenant, the presence of God, and bring him back to Jerusalem. But he went carrying him with oxen and a cart. And like what God had said before. Second Samuel chapter 6, verse 6 to 11. As they came to the threshing place of Nacon, the oxen stumbled and rearranged out and took hold of the covenant box. At once the Lord became angry with Zia, with Uzzah, and killed him because of his irreverence. Uzzah died there beside the covenant box. This box was that powerful. The presence of God is that power. He's so holy. You cannot deal him with irreverence. He's God. He needs to be revered. That's how you build a relationship. By worshiping him. By adoring him. Not playing with him around. Fooling around with him. Verse 9 says, Then David was afraid of the Lord and said, How can I take the covenant box with me now? So he decided not to take it with him to Jerusalem. Instead, he turned off the road and took it to the house of Obed-Edom. Obed a native of the city of Gath. It stayed there for three months, and the Lord blessed Obedadom and his family. Why? Obedadom was a God fearing man. That's why David said, Let it go there to the God fearing man, a person who's striving to please God. And when the presence of God was in the man of God who's seeking God in spirit and truth, what follows? 
blessings. The power of relationship. The man was blessed. Until David, I believe, he felt a little jealousy. 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 12, 15. King David heard that because of the covenant box, the Lord had blessed Obedodom's family and all that he had. So he fed the covenant box. He went fetching it from Obed's house to take it to Jerusalem with a great celebration. After the men carrying the covenant box had gone six steps, David made them stop while he offered the Lord a sacrifice of a bull and a fattened calf. David, wearing only a linen cloth round his waist, danced with all his might to honor the Lord. And so he and all the Israelites took the covenant box up to Jerusalem with shouts of joy and the sound of trumpet. This time round is carrying the Lord in the right way. He is well prepared spiritually. He is praying reverence of the Lord. The right people carrying it this time. Not oxen, the right people, the Levites on their shoulder, prepared, cleanse themselves. And from that day, victory, victory, victory. Because of being with the Lord and following his ways. The question is, in all this journey that we have walked, what made the difference? Relationship. It's all about relationship. If I may summarize the journey we've just walked today, the Ark of the Covenant, the presence of God, with a good relationship, victor. They were always winning. Poor relationship, sinful lifestyle, defeat, defeat, defeat. The Ark is captured and taken away, but still powerful. 30,000 Israelites are killed when they have the Lord with them because of a poor relationship, because of sin. The Philistines take the ark to their god, Dagon, he's chopped off the head and the hands. The ark is still powerful, the presence of God is still there. Even today, the Lord is still powerful, even in the church, even in the Eucharist. But sometimes you're not experiencing that power because of a poor relationship. The Philistines suffer diseases, tumors, until they return the Lord. To the Hebrews. And they stayed with the Lord for 20 years. As if he's not there. The way sometimes Christians will live with the Lord. As if he's not there. You even hear Christians saying that. God does not hear my prayers anymore. Ask yourself why. Prophet Samuel comes. A man of God. And he tells them. Remove all the other gods. Rebuild your relationship with the Lord. And when they remove the other gods. They started only serving the God. Loving the Lord. Building a relationship. Victory again. They became victors. When Uzzah is touching the ark. He reveres in an unworthy manner. Dies. The power in the presence of God. David comes in the right way. Prayer, fasting, adoring, worshipping, sacrificing, sin free. And they are victorious. The question is, what was the difference? Relationship, relationship, relationship. How about the Christian of today? Who is not only carrying a wooden box with the Lord, but God is living in you. God is living in me, not a wooden box. How much more powerful are we meant to be? We are even receiving Jesus in the Eucharist. Not in a wooden box, but he's in us. In dwelling in us, yet this power cannot be experienced. But in the early church, it was experienced. Petro, our first pope, would actually walk and demons are living because of his shadow. The power of relations, they gave their life to the Lord completely. Good relationship, we become powerful because we experience the power of that relationship. Moses had to build a relationship with the Lord. Moses was a stammerer. Moses was a murderer. He had murdered someone in Egypt. He was running away. He was a fugitive. 
He didn't know how to communicate. When the Lord is saying, I'm sending you to save them, he said, I don't even know how to speak. I'm a stammerer. I'm a fugitive. I'm a murderer. And the Lord said, don't worry. I will be with you. And what did he start? Building a relationship of trust. Loving each other. Faithfulness. And God used him in mighty, mighty ways. The power of relationship. Look at Abraham from a pagan family, a family that didn't know God. They were, they were, they were, they had other gods, witchcraft, marrying many wives. But God says, I'm setting you apart to start a new relationship with you, not the one you had before, but a relationship based on faith. And Abraham becomes the father of our faith, the trusted friend of God. By just building a relationship with the mighty and living God. Look at Daniel. A man ready to die for God. Ready to die for faithfulness. No wonder God says there is no greater love than a person dying for his friends. The highest level of love. Jesus is ready to die for you. Daniel is ready to die for him. Their relationship was that close. That you're even ready to die for him. Because you've been building a relationship, nothing can shake you away from the master, from the Lord. Ready to die for him. And when he's ready to die for him, true friendship, the power of relationship is experienced. Even in the lion's den, they can't touch him. Because of the power of his relationship with the Lord. Look at Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Even fire cannot touch them. Because of the power of the relationship. Having a wall of fire around them. Being in the place where God ordained for you to be. Being in the plan of God. Today, my dear brothers and sisters. Let us rebuild or start rebuilding again a relationship based on mutual trust, faith, and genuine love with our ever-loving and generous God. And we shall experience his power, the power of relationship. We shall experience that power. He didn't die for nothing. He died so that we can become his friends again. We can become his children again. We can become his beloved children. We cannot be beloved and we are still sinning. You may close your eyes. Ask God to forgive you for the many times you have not worked on your relationship with him. You have listened more to the people of the world. You have listened more to the money talk, the political talk, the greediness talk, everybody wants to be rich, the sexual talk. Everybody must have a girlfriend, a boyfriend, even the married ones must have a plan B. Those are not ways of building a relationship with the Lord. Ask God to forgive you. Invoke his precious blood. We saw a week ago or two, we saw how his blood saved you. Nothing else could save you but the blood of Jesus. His relationship with you is of constant love and generosity. How about you and I? How are we reciprocating? Father, in the name of Jesus, forgive our sins and weaknesses. Forgive us for the many times that we have broken our relationship with you. We have persecuted you. We have deserted you. We have not worked on our personal relationship with you. We have just moved to the crowd. Sometimes in the church, but still not having a relationship with you. Help us from this day on to start working on rebuilding our relationship with you based on mutual faith and trust and understanding being obedient to you god so you can bless us here on earth 
and at the end of day, uh, at the end of day, be with you in heaven forevermore. In Jesus' name, I pray. Trust and believe. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you'd like to continue receiving these weekly presentations, ensure to press on the subscribe button. Thereafter, press on the notification bell so that every time a presentation is uploaded, you get a message on your phone. See you next week. Thank you and God bless you. Yeah.